Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of our Magica Voxel tutorial. Today we're diving into camera and image settings. If you find this tutorial helpful, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe to my channel. If you're ready, let's get into it. In the last episode, we talked about materials and display panel. Today we're going to cover everything in camera and image section. Materials we already covered in the last one. Now we go into camera settings. Let me close it all up so we can start together. First up, we have lens. The lens settings define how your camera views objects, affecting perspective and distortion. This number you see here controls the field of view or FOV, just like real world camera lenses. A wide angle lens captures more of the scene, but it distorts the perspective. So if you have higher values in your field of view number, it is going to exaggerate your perspective. And if you go lower with the value, objects are going to appear more flat and less distorted. It's really like dealing with real life camera and lenses. Below the lens setting, you'll see three options Perspective, Stereographic Projection or SG and Panoramic Camera or Pano Perspective Camera is the default setting and it mimics a real-world camera Objects farther away appear smaller and the closer objects get to the lens, to the camera they're gonna look bigger, just like in real life Next one is SG or Stereographic Projection. So when you turn this on, adds a subtle curvature to your scene. It's kind of similar to a fisheye lens in real life, as you can see. It kind of warps your perspective. And the next one, panoramic camera or 360 view. This one is used for rendering full 360 images. If you want to create an HDRI with your scene or if you want to use your environment in VR, if you know how to use it, uh, this is the camera setting for that. Now let's talk about depth of field. Depth of field controls how much of your image is in focus, just like it does in real life cameras. But as you can see here, when I change the value of aperture, nothing happens because you have to have depth of field button right here turned on. So either you can insert a number or you can just simply click on any object you want to be in focus on in your scene and then if so it locks the focus on that specific object so as you can see when i click on different parts of my video it changes the depth of field so if you noticed in the background where i have sources of light and it's mostly not in focus, you can see all this bokeh effects, which is all those colorful circles in the background. So you have two settings to control that effect. One is rotation and the other one is blade. Blade actually controls the number of edges in your bokeh effect. So when you have it at default, which is zero, you're going to have smooth bokeh in the shape of a sphere but as you increase it, it creates polygonal bokeh. So if you have, for example, three blades, creates this kind of triangle. And then the rotation controls the angle of the blur effect when you're using it. 
As you can see, it changes the direction. Okay, now that we've got the camera settings down, let's talk about film settings. First up, we have exposure. Exposure controls the overall brightness of your render. So if your render looks too dark, you can just increase exposure setting instead of manually tweaking light in your scene. And then we have vignette. Vignette adds these dark edges to your image, so it puts more attention on the center. Next one is ACES. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. This one ensures accurate colors and lighting. It mimics real world light behavior. So it prevents your scene from overexposure or unnatural shadows. So overall, this option keeps the lighting realistic. Next up, we have Bloom. Bloom adds a soft glow to all of your light sources. You have four different settings for Bloom. First one is Mix. Mix adjusts the intensity of the Bloom effect. Size determines how far the glow spreads like how big they should be. So Aspect creates this star kind of effect, but the shape of it, it really depends on how many blades you have. And you can see you can rotate or you can change the number of blades, which changes the effect. And threshold is to control which light sources trigger bloom. And if you have lower values, you're gonna have more bloom effect. If you have higher values of threshold, it's gonna include less lights. Just remember that you cannot have bloom effect in any of your renders. Bloom effect only works if you do a screen capture on the left corner. For the higher resolution renders or any turntable or animation, you'll have to add Bloom manually in post-processing and in other programs. As we talked about it before, you also have some extra camera settings down here. So instead of manually moving your camera with the mouse, you, can, you also have these settings down here that you can have more control over your camera movements. So these ones just control the position of the camera in space. So if you find your camera movements is too fast or too slow, tweaking these settings can make navigation smoother. You can also control the field of view right here. It's the same as the one up top in lens settings. And you can control the speed of your camera. So speed controls how fast the camera moves overall. And lastly, we have mouse sensitivity. So it adjusts your mouse movements. So for example, if you're working with a huge scene, you can increase the speed setting to navigate around your scene faster. You can also use these numbers right here or A, D, Q and E on your keyboard to rotate around your scene. Now moving on to the next panel, which is our image settings. This is where you can do high resolution renders of your scene. So first one is photo mode. Photo mode is the most basic and commonly used render setting. It captures a single high quality image of your whole scene. So you have width and height and you can render really high resolution renders of your scene. 
Also, another thing you have to keep in mind here is the amount of your samples. The more samples you have, it's going to result in smoother, more high quality, high resolution render and less noise. But it's definitely going to slow down your whole render time. So usually you can use this for your final renders. So the more samples you have, the less noisy, higher resolution, higher quality render you will have. And then after you set everything, you just hit render and save your file. Next, we have turntable. Turntable automatically spins your model in a circle. Literally like having your model showcasing in a 360 degree on a turntable. It's perfect if you want to showcase your design from all angles. So instead of moving the camera manually, Magic of Oxo automatically rotates your model and it generates a series of images. But remember that Magic of Oxo does not generate a video file. It just generates separate images or separate frames and then you'll need to combine these frames into a video or a GIF in an external program. The angle setting controls how far your model rotates. The default is 360, so it means you will have one full spin around your model. So for example, if you have like a 180 angle, you will have a half turn. Frame settings determines how many images or frames are going to be generated in one full rotation. So the less frames you have, the model is going to rotate faster, but also it might look jumpy. I slowed it down a little bit so you can see. But the more frames you have, the model is gonna rotate more smoothly and more naturally. You can see here, I have 360 frames for a 360 angle. So it means for each frame, it's rotating my model one degree. You can already see how smoother it's rotating now. And if you want a seamless loop, it's better to keep your angle at 360. And the blur setting in turntable mode simulates motion blur or like a directional blur. So it adds a slight blur effect to each frame. This is kind of similar to what happens in real life when taking a photo and an object is moving fast. But personally, I usually keep it at zero to have a sharper render because if I want, I can add uh, some motion blur later on during post-processing. Another thing to keep in mind is you have to make sure that your model is centered in your view. Otherwise, your turntable is not going to be perfect, the center of your frame. So you can check down here when you rotate around or with A or D keys on the keyboard to rotate around your model and see if it's in the center of your frame throughout the whole spin. Now that your settings are ready, it's time to render the animation. So you just press render and it will create a PNG sequence of each frame that you have to pile up together in another software or program. The last part in image settings is animation. This is a frame by frame animation, which I can cover in another tutorial if you guys want. You just have to let me know in the comments if I should do a tutorial on that or not. Okay, now let's get back to our cozy little house that we finished together and now let's do a render if you remember when i talked about camera position save and load this is my saved camera position let's go to photo mode set the width and height 10k by 10k height and width i'm going to also set my image size the same aspect ratio as my output render set the samples maybe 5k because here i don't think i need more than 5k and then i hit render and then i'll give it a name and save it and you wait for it to finish the render and then you're done and just like that we did it we started this house from scratch and throughout this whole series 
We built it out together, piece by piece, learning everything from modeling, texturing, to lighting and rendering, and all the cool tricks in between. But this is just the beginning. From now on, I'll be taking your suggestions. So if there's anything specific you guys want to learn, drop it in the comments. I'll also be making more videos diving deeper into tips, tricks, and more advanced techniques to help you push your voxel art even further. So if you enjoyed this series, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.